Janice and I hope you're all doing well. We are starting off this video here in Eastwood because as you might be able to tell by the title of this video, we are going hot pot today, a DIY hot pot. Some people call it hot pot, other people call it steamboat, but essentially what we're doing tonight is we have a pot of hot soup and we're gonna cook a whole bunch of different food, you know, meat, veg, tofu noodles, and it's delicious. It's the perfect time to do it because it's getting cold in Sydney and Eastwood is the place I go to for all my hot pot ingredients. So come with me while I show you where you can get the best meats, the best veg, the best, um, you know, the, the different meatballs and fish balls to add into your hot pot. All right, let's go. In my opinion, this is the best butcher to get your meats. Typically what I get is my, my fatty beef, my fatty pork, and sometimes ox tongue as well. And now what it also says on the sign is that if you buy 68 bucks or more of the meat, you can get like free pork sausages or like a free fish paste. So what we've got is we ended up getting over 68 bucks of meat and um, we got a, a free thing of fish paste, which tastes delicious. So it's like mashed and chopped fish and when you add it into your hot pot soup, it's it's so, so amazing. I'll show you tonight. Okay, now that we have our meats, the next thing that we're gonna need to get is all our other hot pot condiments. So our fish balls, our beef balls, our tofu, our noodles, um, our sauces, our soup base. And there's a one-stop shop where you can get all of these ingredients, which is just your local Asian supermarket. We're heading to one that's called Sakura Supermarket. It's a bit bigger than some of the other Asian supermarkets here in Eastwood. And um, I prefer it because there's more space to walk around and whatnot. All right, so this is where you can get all your beef balls and fish balls and fish tofu squares. They're delicious. And of course, we can't miss the noodles. So I'll be getting udon for tonight. And here we've also got a whole bunch of different soup bases. So typically we would make our soup own soup base, but then uh, sometimes if we're lazy, we just buy like a soup packet mix. There are so many different types and styles of hot pot broths that are available. There's like seafood, tomato, mushroom, chicken and pork based. And so what I'm gonna be going for today is the chicken and pork soup base from uh, Hadi Lao, because I've tried it before and I quite enjoyed it. So that's what I'm gonna be going for for tonight as well. Okay, so tofu is always a must as well as the fried tofu. And I found these. These are like, these are like vermicelli bows kind of thing, but then they are so, got so much bite when you put it in the soup and then they soak up all the flavors of the soup as well. And uh, typically we also get wontons when we have hot pot. Now you can make your own wontons and if you want to do that, here's a video you should check out where you can learn how to make your own pork wontons. But if you don't want to make your own wontons, you can't be bothered, you can buy some frozen wontons here as well. Okay, and in terms of sauces, I think that there are a few sauces that are essential for hot pots. So you've got your spring onions, your chopped garlic, soy sauce, sesame oil. But I also think that chili garlic is absolutely delicious. Um, satay sauce is also great. And uh, you can get pretty much any sauce you're looking for right here. But anyway, when you are having hot pot, of course, of course, of course, you have to have drinks. And a lot of people like beer, or like if you are going to a hot pot restaurant, you get the option of a cooling drink, like sugar cane or something like that, or coconut juice. My sister has requested that I get her aloe vera. It's always our go-to when we go hot pot because we find that it's quite cooling. And you can, of course, also get your vegetables right outside the Sakura supermarket. Okay, we're pretty much done with all our shopping for our hot pot today. Let me show you exactly what we've bought. So this is what we got. A few boxes of meat, there was more in the fridge, but here we have two boxes of fatty beef, pork and ox tongue, all the different types of meatballs. So we have fish, beef, pork, tofu fish, the free fish paste we got for spending over 68 bucks on meat, tofu and fried tofu, these are perfect for soaking up the flavors of the broth, our vegetables, so our corn, watercress, Chinese lettuce, and gnocchi mushrooms, and radish. Then we also have our noodles and our vermicelli bow kind of thing. 
some frozen wontons. Now make your own if you can, I was lazy that day. Our hot pot soup base and also our sauces. Your standard soy sauce, sesame oil, chili garlic is more than enough. So it's that time of night where we start preparing for the hot pot session. So first thing that we gotta do is actually prepare the soup base. So typically we make our own soup base or we can't be bothered, we buy it, which is what we've done in this instance. We've got this soup base that uh, we're gonna be using tonight. All right, everything is prepped and ready. So the first thing that we actually need to do is to make the sauce. So what I typically add is I have spring onions, garlic, I add soy sauce and also sesame oil, and then I mix it together and it tastes amazing. In general, there are a few rules in relation to hot pot. So we always use two different pairs of chopsticks, preferably different colors. One is for you to cook your food and the other is for you to eat your food so that one touches the raw stuff and the other touches the cooked stuff. And another thing is to add small amounts one at a time so that you don't overcook anything. I would just cook things as I go. I wouldn't cook like a whole bunch of meats and then eat that all in one go. So in terms of the order we cook things, we usually put all the different, you know, fish balls, beef balls, pork balls into the pot first uh, and let it boil really well. And then once it floats to the top, you know that they're cooked and then you start with the meats. So your beef, your pork or lamb, if you, if you like to have lamb for your hot pot, we actually leave the vegetables last because you want it to soak up all the the essence of everything that you've cooked so it's got a lot of flavor and you also eat your noodles last as well i usually like to have rice with my hot pot but we didn't cook any rice today so we do have a plate of udon so i'll be digging into this later okay and when it comes to hot pot drinks of choice for most people is probably like beer or something cold or if you're at restaurants, it's really nice to uh, drink the sugar cane juice. But what we have today is my personal favorite. We've got aloe vera, the ones with like aloe vera inside that give it of a different texture. But uh, all the, the fish and meatballs seem to be ready. So we're gonna get started. All right, first bite of the beef. So you don't let it overcook. That's why you have to keep an eye on it the whole time so that one, it doesn't overcook and two, no one else takes your piece of meat. The garlic soy sauce and spring onion combo is always the best, so good. The next thing that I'm gonna try is, it's like a minced fish paste and it goes really well when you have hot pot. It's just so, so springy. It's got a really good bite to it. It just tastes so fresh. It's a little bit chewy, but with this broth, I think it tastes really, really good. The reason we also add tofu and also radish is because these things really soak up the flavors of the broth and also the flavors of everything that you've cooked in the broth. It just enhances the flavors of both ingredients. Okay, so now I've got the tofu fish, I've got the tofu, and I've also got the radish. So a tofu fish is similar to a fish ball in terms of taste and texture, but it's shaped like a tofu. It's always dangerous to one bite of these things, but I've kind of left it out for a little bit now. That's hot, but it's very delicious. I always love radish in hot pot as well. And same with the tofu. So smooth and so flavorful. I like beef balls as much as fish balls. But I do find the beef ones to be a lot springier. I find that, yeah, the beef ones a lot more springy. They're a bit lower with and it's a got, <laughs> And it's got a lot more bite to it. Okay, another hot pot favorite of mine is ox tongue. Whether it's barbecue or hot pot, I love it in both uh, scenarios. Okay, so now that we've been cooking everything for a while now, that's when we can start adding the vegetables in. So typically when we do have hot pot, the vegetables that we use more often than not is lettuce and, and Chinese cabbage and two other vegetables that I'm not sure what the English name is. Uh, and there are certain vegetables that you just don't really put in hot pot, like things like, I don't know, like broccoli. You don't really use, put broccoli in hot pot. Oh, oh yeah, cauliflower. Okay, so we're gonna add the lettuce in, let it soak in all those flavors. Okay, so we've got a vermicelli thing and also uh, the lettuce. So I'm gonna try the vermicelli thing first. It's like a vermicelli tied into a bow. It tasted very good, but it was very hot. Oh, I wow. underestimated how hot it was. Yeah. And the lettuce. Sounds like 
Okay, we've just put in my go-to mushroom for hot pot, the enoki mushrooms. <laughs> Boris, I saw your arms. <laughs> Okay, we've just put in my favorite go-to mushroom for hot pot, the gnocchi mushrooms. And you don't need to leave it in for too long. You don't want it to get like mushy and stuff. So uh, maybe like a minute and, and that's, that's enough time for it to cook. It's cooked perfectly. And I've said this so many times, but I love how it tastes like the flavors of the, the broth and whatever it's in the pot. Okay, so I typically have rice with my hot pot because usually if I don't have rice during dinner time, I feel like there's something missing. Anyway, we have udon instead. I did it like a dipping sauce thing. So I just dipped it into my soy sauce, garlic, sesame oil, and spring onions. This is a perfect meal for winter. We do this multiple times during winter and especially when it's like really, really cold. It's quite cold today in Sydney, actually. I think it's like under 10 which in a lot of countries isn't actually cold at all. <laughs> the udon is so good, I have to have seconds. Just dipping it into that soy sauce just makes it so delicious. So here we go again. With the udon, if you are gonna put udon into your hot pot, you really don't need to put it in for long at all. Like 30 seconds is enough because it's the udon- brand you buy. Nah, the, the udon that you get like frozen, it's already cooked. So once it like softens, you're done. All right, we are pretty much done and I think I'm gonna end the video here. I'll put in my description all the details in terms of food and sauces and soup bases, etc., etc. If you're still watching, thank you so much for watching till the end. I post new videos every week, so check them out if you have time. I hope you have an amazing rest of the day and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Okay, we were having a rather random discussion just then and uh, it's in relation to whether the word everyone has three syllables or four syllables. I think it's three, everyone, but uh, someone said that it has four because it's everyone. Is it three or four? I think it's three. <laughs>